I'm Brent Weaver and you're watching YouGurus, the must-watch web series to become a more profitable and in-demand web professional. Today, I'm in Boulder, Colorado at Inspiring Apps, hanging out with their founder and president, Brad Weber. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So Brad, why did you start Inspiring Apps? I graduated from CU with my MBA and took a job at one of the, at then time, I believe, uh, Big Six consulting firm. Uh, over that tenure, never saw a project successfully delivered, which was frustrating for me. I like to build things that people use. So I ventured out on my own. And so in 2007, I founded Inspiring Apps. And it was the same time that the iPhone was introduced. And so pretty quickly, our work transitioned from desktop and web to mobile and web uh, as it continues today. So you decided to go from maybe a cushy corporate job <laughs> to like your own thing. Right. What was that transition like? It was a lot of time spent doing both. Uh, I needed to uh, moonlight and freelance work evenings and weekends until I had enough uh, friends and family and small business work that would keep me going full time. And now a lot of people I think are in that space and they're like freaked out about like how far and how fast do I do that. Did, were you like totally self-sufficient with your clients before you made that jump or was there a little bit of a risk there? It was pretty close and I found one of the things that helped me was to partner with some other agencies in town. So they were responsible for finding business for themselves and so much that there was excess and enough left over for me to, to ramp up in the early days. So five years into the Inspiring Apps business, you have a team I can see behind us here. Right. Um, what's your <clears throat> current size? We have 15 currently, but that's after an expansion and, and contraction to get to this right size. <laughs> okay, so what, what did you guys get up to at one point? Well, when uh, we started, as I said, it was about the same time as the iPhone, and so there was a, a fever around uh, app development and desire for companies to have apps developed on their behalf. So uh, we had two offices and grew to a, a point where we were about 30 people, uh, one in Fort Collins and, and one in Boulder. And uh, it was exciting, but terrible at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one to 30 people, like pretty quickly. It was pretty quick within a couple of years. Having more people is not necessarily more profitable. And that was a, a realization for me, a lesson that I had to learn uh, that was painful back in the day. But what led to our um, reduction in size and consolidation to a single office was a desire to get better at what we're doing. Uh, we needed to be better at estimating, we needed to be better at executing, and we're able to do that now, whereas at the time it was, uh, it, it was a bit hectic. <laughs> So getting better at estimating and executing, was that just as simple as consolidating down to one office or were there certain things that you guys had to go out and learn how to do better in order to make that work? No, there's quite a bit of extra work uh, to be done there. I'm sure that had we only had one office at the time with the same frenzy of activity, we wouldn't have been any better at it uh, or not much better at it than, than having two offices. So one of the things we've spent a lot of time on uh, recently is uh, to improve our estimating is to estimate as we always have, do the work, try to uh, stay as close to those estimates as we can, but then afterwards review in detail where things may have gone awry and then in the future the next time a project comes along that is similar to something we've done in the past we can adjust those estimates or learn from you know, what, uh, that prior work and improve those. Are you guys currently billing under a time of materials like you throw an estimate out there to the customer and then whatever you end up working into the project ends up being what you get paid? That's been a transition over the years as well. <laughs> so in the dozen years of working for myself, I was almost entirely time and materials and never got hurt on a project. And uh, that was nice. But when I came into this business and working for larger companies, I had made the assumption that they're going to work on, want to work on a fixed bid basis. So without really getting that request, I was trying to be preemptive and we changed our practice. So we went from time and materials to uh, bidding everything fixed uh, for a while. And since mobile was so new, our skills were new, our people were new, we were growing quickly. Uh, that was not the right thing to do. <laughs> and so uh, there's, there's a time and a place for fixed bid. Uh, we have since gotten much better at, at our estimating as a result of the things that I just described. 
uh, I'm more comfortable doing that now, working on that basis and in a way that can be fair to both our client and us. Uh, but that said, I was wrong about the assumption and most of our work has returned to be time and materials even for the large companies at this point. It makes more sense, I think, for um, a, a more agile-like process to be able to uh, work in small chunks, deliver, you know, let the client know what they've paid for so far and make adjustments along the way. So now you guys build some, some web stuff, some app stuff. Do you have any particular technologies that are kind of your forte? Uh, that's a, a mix as well. So on the server side, we tend to be PHP and MySQL. <clears throat> and then uh, on the mobile side, we, we have Objective-C and Java Talent on our team, uh, as well as JavaScript. And we do a fair amount of AppCelerator's Titanium uh, development for some of our cross-platform projects. So what's a typical project engagement for you guys look like in terms of like revenue size for that project and how many team members and the length of time you guys put on it? So I would say the typical project these days are around 50,000 to 150,000, but uh, that can range from as low as 25 to up to seven figures for an extra large project where we're working across lots of platforms. And in terms of people, we, we always have a project manager um, overseeing now. There's always a designer involved and then the number of developers and the technologies depend on the demands of the project, so anywhere from two to five or six. So now with your background, you said MBA, so are you, have you been, always been on the business side or have you been like in there coding and building and stuff like that? Both. My passion is really for technology and software development in particular. So that's something that I've taken upon myself to learn as much as possible. You know, sometimes formally at CU, I took elective classes out of the computer science department as I was working on my business degree because uh, that was fun for me. And then continuous learning uh, now, watching iTunes U courses and uh, uh, reading books and whatever I can to, to keep my nose in the technology as well. What would best describe the culture you guys have here at Inspiring Apps? Oh boy, we went through uh, an, an exercise of defining that recently. <laughs> so it should be fresh in my mind. <laughs> uh, but there, we took time as a team in our conference room with the whiteboard and uh, people were sharing uh, adjectives and phrases that uh, described their experience and the things that they thought were important here. And it was fun for me because it had been you know, six years with the company at that point. And uh, the kinds of things that were uh, thrown out, as I said, were really gratifying uh, to me that I felt like I'd built something that was you know, meant something to, to people. So uh, we're very interested in uh, community service, continuing education for ourselves, you know, continuous improvement of our skills. Uh, it's a very relaxed atmosphere in here. Uh, we have, uh, I have family myself, we have uh, folks on the team who do as well and it's a, it's a very family friendly place to work. We get our work done during business hours. We're not pulling all-nighters, working late into the evenings or weekends, things like that. Was it like a, a leap of faith for you to go from like the one person and, and bring on that first employee or were you like, I'm going in, I'm going fast? Uh, the first employee is tough. Uh, it's tough to go from one to two or two to three, uh, but I'm pleased to say the first employee is still back there working today. <laughs> been with that's, me six years so it's a good test uh, if you can if you can hire the right one the first time then the rest become a lot easier I, I get really lucky in that regard and then in terms of retaining so it sounds like you're able to retain team members that want to participate in the business long term right what kind of things do you do on an ongoing basis to make them feel like there's a long-term vision with the business one is just make this a nice place for them to want to be and uh, we do that in a lot of ways. I mean, one is through a benefits package. We've got health plan and 401k, uh, as well as the ability to set your own schedule, more or less. Uh, some people choose to work remotely from time to time, uh, which allows them to you know, get away and have somewhat of a working vacation, uh, which is convenient for folks. Uh, this year, we're trying for the first time uh, uh, un unlimited or perhaps untracked, however you want to label it, uh, PTO policy, uh, where folks need time off, whether they just need to blow off steam or you know, have something important coming up with their family, then they take it. Uh, they don't have to worry about how much is in the bank.
and I think we're seeing that with kind of the knowledge worker economy, the people that are you know, up in their headspace the whole day and they're kind of just chained to a desk, so to speak, that people are trying to give them more freedom to make right. it seem like a more dynamic profession. So in terms of the makeup of, of your business, uh, a lot of agencies like yours have the whole like service business and then they start experimenting with some products. We were actually talking to a company just earlier today. It seemed like they were in the depths of this decision of all of a sudden they have a product that's getting some success and now they have to have some customer service for mm -hmm. that product and do they want to actually pursue that? Have you guys um, done this? Have you experimented with any kind of products? We have. We have uh, two of our own products in the, the App Store now with uh, one to come and it's tough to find the right balance there. I mean, there's, I, I've chosen not to take on funding for the business so we, uh, we need to either sell products or uh, bill for projects in order to keep the lights on. And so on a weekly basis, I work with the project managers to make sure that there's the right mix. Uh, so the lights do stay on and we can continue to keep our clients satisfied, satisfied and advance our products as well. I would like to see us stay involved with client projects because there's so much variety and I think people enjoy that mm -hmm. in terms of the technology that they get to work on as well as the business challenges that they uh, get to address. Uh, but at the same time, there's something special about working on your own products and knowing that that's something that you're going to have around for a long time and has been around for a long time that you get to continue to improve and uh, really set the direction for. So that's, that's fun for our team. So you've been at this for a while. What practices, either daily, weekly, or monthly, have, have really helped you get you to where you are today? On the personal side, uh, I have to be physically active to maintain my sanity. And so I swim a few times a week, I play water polo when I can, but that's been a little more rare <laughs> lately. Uh, but it helps me to have a routine and have that time to myself where I'm just staring at the black line on the bottom of the pool and either <laughs> don't think about anything or that's a time when I can really focus and think about something, whether it be a personnel issue or a, a technical challenge that I've been thinking about for a while. And then uh, on the professional side, I think uh, I've heard many in your series talk about the importance of networking and uh, being involved in your community and talking to other people who are uh, facing the same kind of uh, challenges and uh, try to stay involved and, and talk to other folks, get feedback, advice, mentorship, things like that along the way uh, that really helps. So what are you best at in the business? I think I'm adept at applying uh, technology, appropriate technology solutions to meet business challenges. So I have a passion for learning and staying involved in the technology and uh, as I mentioned I read and take courses you know, online and attend meetup groups to try and keep those skills current because I like to know what's possible. I want to know what other people have done with the technology and then I can take bits and pieces from what I've seen and try to assemble them in unique ways to uh, meet business challenges. And uh, I like to think that uh, in order to keep a team together for you know, six years that I have some soft skills and the ability <laughs> to listen to what's important to them and uh, take their feedback. Uh, seriously and take that into account as we're making decisions for the business. And that can be difficult. I mean, you've got a bunch of different voices coming at you, like, I want this, I want this. I mean, how? what's your process for kind of consolidating that information and saying, okay, we're going to attack the red hill now versus right. the blue hill? You know, like... <laughs> sure. Uh, we have a few things. So there's, uh, there's a group process that happens every week. Uh, we have a team lunch in our conference room, you know, all 15 of us sitting around the table and we do that every Wednesday, and we'll talk about something that's either a challenge for the team or you know, it could be a process discussion, something that we want to improve. A year or so ago, I instituted a Lunch with Brad <laughs> program where uh, we'll get together one-on-one uh, -on -one and just go somewhere nearby, and uh, that's a great opportunity for me to hear you know, more personal requests about whether it be pro professional development or something that's challenging at the office that we need to address. So, uh, 12 years on your own, five, six years with this team, um, over that period of time of 17 years, long time. what would you tell somebody that's just starting out, that's just on that, that first year as a web pro or an app developer, or you know, they're, they're on this journey that you've already been on for 17 years, like what should they know? I'm still on it, for one, <laughs> but I'd say uh, first, uh, I've talked about learning 
uh, my, my personal journey in that regard, and I think that's critical for success in this industry. Things change so quickly, um, more so than some others, for sure. For the folks who uh, are starting out, one of the things that helped me in the early days, uh, well, it was also a, a challenge, was to be willing to invest in building something that you may not get paid for. Um, and it may be more than one something. But the, we finish our company meetings that we have quarterly here. And I remind folks that the, uh, there's a three-step process to our success. It's to build great products, tell people about them, and profit. And it starts with the building. It doesn't start with the profiting. So uh, for me, it meant that I had to build some things for small businesses and friends so that I could have a portfolio that I could then take to eventually paying clients. And uh, I think that's critical, but it, it's hard. And I think that uh, some people don't leave enough time to do that. You know, if, you, uh, if I'd left my, my big consulting job without any other work and said, okay, I'm gonna start day one and hang out my shingle, uh, then there's a surprising amount of time that may take to, to build up that portfolio and trust from your first client. So uh, I recommend trying to invest that uh, perhaps overlapping some other opportunity that you might be involved in. I think going from a full-time gig to your own thing, I mean, that could be a rude awakening if that's a, you know, going from first gear to sixth gear, like sure. you're being told what to do and now you have to go earn your own business. And you know, I think you're spot on there with, it takes some time just to get like kind of a reputation. Right. Like, here's three projects I've worked on and you can talk to the clients and they will tell you I'm not insane. You know, right. like just that little <laughs> bit can be so huge to get your next 10 clients. Yes, uh, clients want to know that they're not taking a big risk with you. They want to have some confidence that you're going to deliver what you say you can deliver. And so the more closely you can match their requirements with something that you've already done, the more comfortable they're going to feel saying yes. So you're a fan of technology. What trends are you following right now? I tend not to be too trendy in my selection of technologies. We always keep our eyes open, for sure. Uh, for instance, we're... But I mean, you know, you guys jumped on apps in 2007. <laughs> well, you it know, kind like... of fell into apps in 2007. <laughs> we thought we were starting a desktop and web business. So then... we, can, we can frame that as like visionary. <laughs> Absolutely. Saw the world moving mobile. Absolutely. I was way ahead of that announcement. <laughs> Uh, we we use Node, for instance, but uh, are very comfortable with PHP on the server side, so we're not looking to displace that, but would like to keep an eye on it and see how that might help us. I would say a, a theme of things we look for is uh, technology that will help us grow and scale solutions that we've uh, either built or aim to build in the future where we can support more users, more traffic, things like that. So uh, Nginx is uh, an initiative on the, the server side that would help PHP uh, in terms of its performance. We, as I mentioned, build a fair number of cross-platform apps and have had good luck with uh, Appcelerator's Titanium in that space and uh, look for continued improvements there. I've always been attracted to cross-platform technologies, even on the desktop, to build Mac and Windows applications from the same source, so uh, that's something that served us well as well. Any trends on the business side in terms of how you're managing the team? I mean, obviously the uh, unlimited PTO is definitely maybe something new, but sure. any other trends you're following on the business side? Um, I don't know about trends. I would say for us, uh, more slow measured growth for the, the company is uh, something that's going to be important to me to know that with each new person we bring on, we, we know how to manage uh, that person as effectively as you know, the team was without them and uh, that we don't get into a crazed expansion that leaves us uh, a little <laughs> a little harried as we were before. What uh, What's next for Inspiring Apps? I expect to spend more time and em emphasize our product work. I think we'll, uh, we'll see that become more and more of a percentage of our business over the years. Uh, we'll have a new product to introduce and uh, on the technology side, we'll continue to pursue things that the, the team finds interesting and you know, further uh, our business along the way. Very cool. Well, hope to touch base with you sometime again sometime soon in the future and uh, get an update on Inspiring Apps. Great. Thanks. Very cool. Well, Brad, we appreciate you taking the time for us today and uh, stay tuned for more great content from ugurus.com.